applicant uh, has to pay the lawyer for <coughs> hearing. So the, um, the uh, there is a stay order. The, even the lawyer of the applicant has no interest in deciding the case quickly. So he will say, uh, let me file a uh, counter, let me file a rejoinder, let me file a reply to that. Uh, <coughs> So we have to pressurize the courts to create more benches, decide cases because the Delhi High Court only one bench is dealing. Earlier it was court number 13, now it is court number 9. An average judge, uh, uh, earlier it was uh, Justice uh, Murlidhar, then Rajiv Sahai and law right now Justice Vipin Sangi is dealing. So uh, these judges read the RTI Act as, as if they are reading Delhi Cooperative Society Act or some other act. So if you have to, uh, RTI Act is an activist type piece of legislation. It has to, uh, it is to serve the constitution. Uh, we have to pressurize the courts and the governments to become more transparent, push for maximum CO motor disclosure. This is important because the argument of the government is that uh, we have been bombarded with application and it is difficult to function. We can't function. So the best answer is you put all the information on your website. You put all the files on the website. So that uh, if anybody asks, you can say, please check our website, everything is there. So there is no problem, that the, uh, nobody has to file an application. It's all public. Uh, this is a cliche, but it bears repetition. It's important. Sunlight is the best. Thank you. Or goal, I would like to say RTI means, and it is one of the important means we support our very fundamental right. I would also like to say that it would be the easiest way to deprive a person from his fundamental right to deprive from all the means we, through which he uh, enjoys his very fundamental right. Uh, having regard to the Menka Gandhi case and other cases uh, where the Honorable Supreme Court has intelligently uh, enlarged the circumference of our fundamental right, uh, right to life. I would like to say, uh, ask why should not uh, right to information be included in our fundamental right? Thank you. The fundamental right, some are available to the citizens, some are available to non citizens. If you go to the uh, this provisions on right to information act, section 3 contemplates this right is available to the citizens of India only. As a result of that, non citizens are not having this right. Obviously, if you want to uh, convert this as a independent, separate fundamental right, it is possible maybe with some restrictions. Honorable Supreme Court has already uh, interpreted that uh, right to information is covered under Article 21 also, so far as that liberty aspect is concerned. Article 20, sub, uh, sub Article 2, so far as the information to the detainee is concerned. Not only that, Article 191A, that is also considered by the Honorable Supreme Court, but that is, these are the different interpretations. 19, 20, 21 has been interpreted. If you are saying that there should be an independent article concerning about the Right to Information Act, it is possible. But today, uh, some fundamental rights for citizens, some for non-citizens, and the Act speak that the provision applies to the citizens only. Therefore, considering that perhaps a, there is further scope and further strengthening is required. Yes. Next question. I have been practicing in Supreme Court for quite some time. A question has been severing in my mind. How could Attorney General appear for Supreme Court before the Delhi High Court to defend Supreme Court in denying the information? He is supposed to support the act of the union rather than oppose it and nobody ever put any questions about it. Uh, may I know the views of the facts? Most, most difficult question, I think this chairperson will answer. Uh, 
but the response which we have got because of this question that creates a further rather answer that has given answer to this question. I think uh, instead of putting our chairperson in difficulty, let us ask this question to the appropriate authority. I, I, I can only say one thing, sir, with your permission. Only one thing that he is taking this cliche that he is the mouthpiece of the government too seriously. <laughs> I would like to add one word. You see, Attorney General cannot take private briefs, but he can appear for public authorities. Supreme Court is an authority under the Constitution. So, Supreme Court is entitled to engage him and is entitled to appear. That is discharge of professional duty. Secondly, the virus of the Act is not under challenge. It is no interpretation is involved. So, therefore, he can appear for a public authority and give an interpretation favorable to authority. There is no conflict of interest with the government in this matter as I see it. Next question. Next question. Next question. I want this. Uh, I want to ask uh, this question to Pranav Sajde. Uh, this is this is regarding Supreme Court registry receives 30 queries every day, and the queries are at such the funny queries like uh, whether Supreme Court judges are bunch of jokers. What is the interpretation of so and so judgment? How many judgments are passed on reservation? So can this kind of queries be entertained and do you think there should be some machinery, some uh, statutory amendment to uh, crop this kind of queries? I don't think right under the RTI Act. Information means paper or uh, a disk or in electronic form. So information that exists, they are not uh, supposed to give any opinions or advice or say in how many cases this has happened, they are not supposed to do that painstaking exercise. Yeah, I have something with reference to this. Citizens who make the application should also circumspect before asking for information. What is relevant, what is necessary, only that they should seek. Not a uh, vote, vote application with all kinds of relevant plus irrelevant questions. I Once the head, of, the head of the department of cardiology in a government hospital <coughs> told me he has been receiving so many queries about each patient in the in the in the admitted to the to the hospital and about the food given to him, his medical reports, various things. He said if I have to answer all these queries, I have to stop surgeries for a week or ten days <laughs> and then we'll attend to it. So we should also keep in mind what is relevant, what is necessary, and try to Confine the application would be that meeting. And, and sir, and don't you think, sir, about the, there's a lot of hidden agendas which have been there in terms of filing it, and then you know, for some reason or the other, as it's just too, at times I've seen this that to delay the matters uh, or maybe some appointment, you know, to just put up uh, to the, this application and then the matter gets delayed. So, so, so sir, what, what do you do in this area? How, how can it be improved? Right? Case by case basis. May I have one more aspect about this? Whenever uh, a activist are approaching uh, we people, means I look at, we are uh, giving a word of advice saying that your question should be precise. You want a information. Information should not be merely yes or no. It should be a precise question so that you can get a proper answer, proper information within the meaning of uh, right to information. Otherwise, if the question is some uh, raised in adversarial manner, then obviously the reply will be also a vague and perhaps that will result into multiplicity of the application, spending time, money, energy. Therefore, whenever a client comes to you or activists come to you, you will have to guide him. You will have to understand what is his requirement, what, what information he wants and then draft that question in such a manner that the PIO or even the appellate authority will not be able to conceal or avoid that information. Uh, I am only one question. Can uh, Lok Ayukta pass a final order during the pendency of appeal? Ayukta obviously that is a different act. It is possible that when the case is pending before the uh, second appellate authority, the applicant might have gone to Lok Ayukta independently. If he has gone independently, then I believe there is no conflict of interest between two different authorities. So Lok Ayukta can pass uh, order within the framework of that act. And uh, 
second appellate authority is that's a state or a state a central level commission they can pass it independently both are two different provisions and i believe that's the possible answer i think the areas of operation are different uh, if it is uh, lokayukta it is concerned with misconduct on the part of public servants whereas this act rt act is providing it provides information to those who seek information about public administration Areas are to be covered. After getting information, it will be possible to highlight this kind of the part of the authority and approach the local. Sir, sir, one second. All the candidates they disclose their assets. Uh, sometimes it is some crore patis and several crore patis also there. But the, the right to inform, under right to information act, the citizens of the country never know the actual the truth because they give also very less amount. But how to tackle that manners? Because you don't know actually what are the assets they have acquired. So we should know that actually if persons they are really getting the money out of some dubious means or some good means. See, what we know, whatever is disclosed by affidavits when they fight elections, it is probably uh, whatever they have disclosed in their income tax returns, etc. So they, if, if you find anything contrary. That can be questioned. I mean, on that ground, the elections can be set aside. No. But whether he he is hiding something or not, it's it's not an investigation that has to be done into how much property he has, how much wife has. He is disclosing according to what he wants to disclose and formally. I think it is based on some uh, on disclosures that he has already made because they are all income tax pays. Most of them are. They are not the. And, and Rajiv, returning officer has a right to reject also that in case the uh, the information has been found that there is some uh, 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 the, the things has been hidden in that uh, 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 nomination paper. Here I would like to ask one aspect. Why question before? Uh, one second. One second. One second. One second. So far as false declarations are concerned, this is a point of order. There are two decisions which say. Is the violation of election commission's order does not attract the amount of disqualification to get like what is taken. Supreme Court has said in another case, unless you plead and prove that the election is materially affected by suppression in the affidavit filed, you are disclosed of accidents, income, etc. Election cannot be set aside. I thought these are the areas which require further amendment in the law to make this right more effective. Second thing is, for making a false affidavit, even prosecution is possible. Third thing is, Supreme Court clarified that returning officer can go to the correctness of the affidavit. If an affidavit is not filed, that's a ground for rejecting the nomination. But if a false affidavit or correct affidavit that query cannot be gone into by the returning officer, this requires a long drawn inquiry. And at the time of election, you don't have all that time to get to that principles also. So these are the constraints. At the moment, there is a loophole in the law which needs to be effectively plugged. Now, last question. Uh, <coughs> question before, uh, before my Shuriji. What is the solution in this act regarding the Parikranaya Sadhuna, Vilashaya Chakushvita, Amtaka Sastham, Panarthaya Sambhama, Yuga Yuga? Yuga 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 I talked in context of the dharma that how it is important to have the dharma and the prerequisite for this is the transparency which is to be there and what we are talking about these days is a lot of corruption I feel personally the moment you make the things more transparent half of the corruption issues more than half will go away so it is very important in the society at the moment to become things become more transparent and you must have seen in the past that how it happens with the judiciary the moment it has started revealing all the information with regard to the assets and the the with the politicians with the bureaucrats the system will automatically have a lot of changes when the transparency is there with regard to all the all the all the assets thank you Uh, my experience is that for lunch now. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think the opportunity to thank all the participants here.
We have spoken like and that this operation is at. Wish to keep with our time. So we have overshot the time limit in the present session. So I will request all of you to have a quick lunch and be back here sharp at 2.15 so that next session can be commenced. And since we have uh, good numbers and the alternative hall may not be able to accommodate all uh, very conveniently, so we'll continue the proceedings in this very hall for the next session also. So kindly.